Hello and welcome to another video with the Bearded Tech Guy. In this video, we will be taking a look at the AA Wireless. This small device allows you to connect your phone to a wired-only Android Auto head unit over wireless by acting as a proxy between your phone and car without having to pay for an expensive aftermarket head unit. AA Wireless is an Indiegogo project that was funded with over 8,000 backers in 2020 and is shipping out devices as well as still taking orders that are expected to ship in June of 2021. The only two requirements for this to work is a phone with Android 9 or newer, but Android 11 is recommended as the feature is fully supported in 11, and a car with a compatible Android Auto head unit installed. I'll have a link in the description below to their main website, which also includes a list of currently supported cars. Keep in mind, this list is created by cars actually using it. So just because your car is not on the list doesn't mean it's not supported. The packaging is very straightforward with a logo on the front and a giant QR code on the back that redirects you to install the companion app for AA Wireless. Inside, you'll find the device itself and a high quality USB-C cable. To get started, you'll want to install the companion app on your phone. Opening the app gives you the option to either sign in or use the app as a guest. You are not required to create an account if you do not wish. It will just make troubleshooting a bit more difficult in the future. After logging in, the app will load a brief guide on some steps you may have to take to enable wireless projection. At the bottom of the guide, you can either open the AA settings or start setup. I recommend taking the time to make sure you have wireless Android Auto enabled. Afterwards, the app will walk you through setting up your device, which is very straightforward. The first step will be turning on your car. I recommend waiting for your car's head unit to fully boot. Then plug the AA wireless into your car using the same port you would for your wired Android Auto. The device will take a few moments to boot and your phone will begin searching for it. Once found, you will be asked to link the companion app with your device. Your phone will then request to pair to your AA wireless directly, and you will be given a choice to allow access to your contacts and call history. The AA wireless will then go through its final configuration steps. Once ready, your phone will display an Android Auto setup page which will finish setting up your Android Auto connection between your phone and AA wireless. This step is only required once for the initial setup with your device. Once connected, you should see the Android Auto notification running and the companion app will have a few different options. This includes changing some settings, checking for an over-the-air update, seeing all the AA wireless devices your phone is paired with, going to the support page, and logging out. Pretty much all of the current general settings are meant to be changed if you're having issues getting your car to work with AA wireless. Under experimental features, there are a few different settings you can change here as well. Clicking on any of the settings will give you a description for what the setting does, and you are able to make changes to the setting from here. If you do make any changes to the settings, make sure to save them. If you open over the air update, it will check for a new version, and if there is one, you are able to update it. AA Wireless Devices will list any devices you have paired with the app and walks you through adding another one if you have it. The last two buttons, Help and Support and Log Out, are pretty self-explanatory. Initial setup did take a few minutes, but after that, connecting to AA Wireless is pretty quick. To demonstrate just how quick, here is an unedited clip of me plugging in the AA Wireless to the USB port of my car while also turning the car on at the same time. This is to mimic the timing of a car turning on that does not turn the USB port on until the car is on. I'll have a quick timer running on the screen to keep track of how long it takes. As you can see in my instance, it takes about 26 seconds for my car to present Android Auto as an option from the time the car is turned on. Different cars will handle the USB port power differently though. For example, my car will leave the power on to the USB port for 5 minutes after the doors are locked and then will turn the power on once the doors are unlocked. This is actually really great in this scenario because 9 times out of 10 my phone is connected to AA Wireless and running Android Auto before I'm even buckled in. Other cars may never turn off the power to the USB port, which may be a concern to some. 
The AA wireless unit does not draw a lot of power, so in theory, as long as you don't leave it sitting for a week or two at a time with it plugged in, it should not drain your car battery too low. If you do not know how your car handles its USB port for power, you can plug your phone in and have Android Auto running on your phone. And while Android Auto is running through your USB cable, turn your car off. You'll then want to open the car door, close the car door, and then lock your car. Do make sure you leave your phone plugged in while running Android Auto for this. After, you'll need to wait to see if your phone stops charging or not. If it does, that means your car turns off the power to the USB port and you won't have to worry. But if 20 or 30 minutes pass by and your phone is still charging, there's a good chance that means your car does not turn off the USB port. At that point, you'll have to decide if AA Wireless is right for you. You could still just unplug the AA Wireless when done, but that partially defeats the purpose of the AA Wireless. There will most likely be an update down the road that will try to fix this for cars that do not shut the power off. But that will be a bit later if it does happen, as right now they are making sure to support as many cars as possible. The small size of the AA Wireless allows for you to easily tuck it away so it's not in the way. This is great for me because my wireless charging pad is near the USB port. You can also easily attach it to something either with some kind of velcro, command strips, or even museum putty. For me, I think I'll just keep it tucked away above the storage cubby. So why might someone pick up one of these instead of just plugging their phone in? For me, a large portion of my car rides are quick 10 minute or less trips. And while the drive is short, I still want to have Android Auto, so instead of plugging my phone in to unplug it soon after, I can have both my Android Auto and not have to worry about messing around with my phone. It's also nice because I can now use my wireless charger in my car. And while I won't charge my phone too quickly, it will still be charging without putting added wear and tear on my USB port. And if I'm going on a longer car ride, I'd want to use a charger that charges faster than my car USB port anyways. A benefit I did not think of comes from using curbside pickup. At the store, I have to show my phone, so before the AA wireless, I would have to unplug my phone because of the shorter cable to be able to show it. This would obviously end my Android Auto session as well, but now I can show my phone without having to unplug it, which is nice. Something nice that others might find about the AA wireless is that it makes things less annoying if you travel a lot with a lot of different car rentals. With the AA wireless, you just have to set your phone up with it and take your AA wireless with you to new cars, and you won't have to worry about repairing your phone to multiple vehicles. Probably not something everyone will take advantage of, but it is another possible benefit. If you happen to have one or more other people who happen to travel with you often, the AA Wireless does support multiple devices. Now this does not mean you can have two devices connected to AA Wireless at the same time, instead it means that multiple devices can be paired to it. AA Wireless will automatically connect to the last device it was connected to when multiple devices are paired. For me, setting up a second phone with the AA Wireless took a few extra minutes, which honestly could have just been because I was trying to find all the different scenarios that would work. If adding a second phone, I recommend having Wi-Fi and Bluetooth off on your main phone or not even having it near your car during pairing. Afterwards, you will walk through the same setup process as you had originally done on the second phone and again you do not need to log in to the companion app if you do not want to. Once a second phone is paired, AA Wireless will automatically connect to it when detected during boot up. Right now, the easiest way to switch AA Wireless to a different already paired phone is to only have the phone nearby when AA Wireless powers on. Otherwise, AA Wireless will always connect to the most recently connected phone. I did find that switching between phones did add a few extra seconds onto the entire time frame for booting, but it was nothing that made me sit around and wait for it. After your desired phone is connected, no other phone will be able to connect. I assume in the future they may have a way to release a phone that is connected to it, or a better way of handling multiple devices, but for now it works this way with very little hassle. My overall experience with AA Wireless has been positive. Voice Assistant triggers pretty quickly for me. What's today? It is Thursday, April 1st, 2021. How many miles to the moon? The moon is about 238,900 miles from Earth. All of my Android Auto apps work as expected, texting works, maps work, and calling works as well. I'm guessing it's just my mind playing tricks on me, but it does feel more responsive than when I was using my phone directly for Android Auto. Also keep in mind that there are a lot of different cars and Android Auto head units out there, as well as different phones. So while my experience with the AA Wireless has been nearly flawless so far, others may have difficulties with certain aspects of the AA Wireless or with getting it to work at all. The developers are constantly working on making improvements to it though. Their goal is to have a stable product that functions with the most different types of cars and phones as possible. With that said, if there are different features or functionality you would like for me to try out, let me know in the comments below and I will do my best to test them. 
With the ability to update the firmware on the AA Wireless, I expect there will be some great quality of life improvements later on down the road once the majority of the compatibility issues are resolved. If you are considering picking one up, don't forget to check out the list of vehicles so far that have been able to connect with AA Wireless to see if yours is on the list. I'll have a link for the main site in the description below. If you found this video helpful, make sure to give it a thumbs up as it helps the channel perform better within the YouTube algorithm. And if you aren't already, consider subscribing to the channel and enabling notifications to be one of the first known to release a new video just like this one. What's 100 plus 100? 100 plus 100 is 200. Thank you for watching.